Hi everyone, um, I will be demonstrating how to use the drug monitoring checker or DMC using a case study. So to set the scene, Denise is a 60 year old retired teacher who's been experiencing episodes of shortness of breath and heart palpitations over the past week. Denise goes to the emergency department and is diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. She is subsequently started on verapamil and warfarin by the medical team and is discharged with the GP to follow up. The GP would like to know what ongoing monitoring is required for verapamil and warfarin. So let's look up each drug, each of these drugs in the DMC. So firstly, I can type verapamil. Um, and you can see after typing the first three letters, the DMC will give the drug options available, which can then be selected. The monitoring parameters for verapamil are blood pressure, heart rate, and liver blood tests. Clicking through each of these will show the monitoring before and after starting treatment um, in, uh, before and after starting treatment um, in everybody and in special circumstances. It will also show the actions to take. These action sections are evidence graded as seen here by the letters, where an A is high strength, for example, a nice accredited guideline or sa drug safety information from a regulatory body. An E is expert opinion and therefore the content has been reviewed by an expert advisor. An M, as seen here, is manufacturer information. More information on how the content is evidence graded can be found in the about section, um, which is found at the top of the page here. Each monitoring parameter um, also has a rationale section, um, which gives information about why the monitoring is required. So for heart rate, we can see that verapamil may cause cardiac disorders. And extra information about this ADR can be found using the links which take you to Martindale's ADR checker. So for example, if I click into this, um, I can search for cardiac disorders and I can search for verapamil and I can see a list of cardiac related ADRs for verapamil that can link through into management summaries, which are longer pieces of work. So back to the DMC um, and verapamil. We can see that regular blood pressure, heart rate, and liver blood test monitoring is required. Now to search warfarin. Um, so there are five monitoring parameters. Um, Again, clicking into each will show which monitoring is required before and after starting treatment. So there is no specific monitoring requirements for clotting tests, full blood count, liver blood tests, and thyroid function tests um, after starting treatment for warfarin. Only INR is routinely monitored um, after starting treatment. So back to the case, the GP would like to know when they can reduce the frequency of INR monitoring. Denise was discharged with twice weekly INR blood testing. So using the DMC, we can see here that INR monitoring is every three to four days, so twice weekly um, for one to two weeks. Therefore, the GP continues with twice weekly INR monitoring for a further week. Denise then returns to see the GP after this time, and the GP reduces her INR monitoring to once weekly as Denise's INR is on target. The target INR for atrial fibrillation is 2.5, which can be found in this section here. Three weeks later, Denise has an INR of six. The GP phones Denise and requests that she comes into the practice for a bleeding assessment. Denise has no signs of bleeding, so the GP consults the DMC for advice uh, using the action section here. Um, the GP then follows the third bullet point um, as the INR is between five and eight, um, with no bleeding. Um, so therefore, the GP decides to withhold warfarin for two doses and then remeasures the INR. Denise's INR does drop to 3.5, so the GP restarts warfarin at a reduced dose. So six months later, Denise returns to the practice for liver blood test monitoring for verapamil. The GP would like to know what the liver blood test cutoffs are. So back to verapamil. I can open the liver blood test section and can see in the action section that the cutoff for liver blood tests is three times, three times greater than the upper limit of normal here. 
Fortunately, Denise's liver blood tests come back within the normal reference ranges. The GP would now like to know more about the specific liver blood test reference ranges, as well as clinical patterns of liver blood tests. The GP clicks on the further information link, which opens up detailed and referenced information about the monitoring parameter. So scrolling down, the GP can find the interpretation, interpretation section, which details how to interpret clinical patterns of liver blood tests. And then to find the reference ranges for each liver blood test, the GP scrolls up to the related parameters section and can click on any of these specific liver blood tests. So for example, ALT, the, the GP can find the reference range here. 